नमस्कार लेट एस टूडे कंटिन्यू विथ मॉड्यूल फाइव विच इज मॉडल्स ऑफ कंज्यूमर्स एंड मॉडल्स ऑफ कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर दिस मॉड्यूल इज टू बी कम्प्लीटेड इन टोटल ऑफ फोर सेशंस विच एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्पीक अबाउट द सेकेंड सेशन uh we have uh, actually discussed the models of consumers uh, we have discussed the economic uh, cognitive passive and emotional views of studying consumers uh we have also discussed the models of consumer behavior in terms of the general models where we spoke about the economic models the psychological model the psychoanalytic model and the sociology model now um uh, today we will be speaking about the models of consumer behavior and we will be speaking about the basic models in consumer behavior um this will include a study on the model of consumer buying and a model on industrial buying uh, when we speak about the model of consumer buying uh, we shall be basically uh, talking about uh, the b2b uh, sorry the b2c uh, scenario the business to consumer scenario and when we talk about the model of industrial buying we will be talking about the b2b scenario or the business to business scenario okay so let us start with the model of consumer buying and we will speak about uh, consumer uh, decision making process in a b2c market or a business to consumer market now what is a consumer market a consumer market is basically an end user market where a product or service is bought for the purpose of personal consumption for the purpose of non commercial use uh, it is for end consumption so uh, these markets are basically end user markets and they are also called a b2c markets or business to consumer markets where uh, the product or service is brought by a, a buyer or a user for his personal and non commercial use uh, according to kotler and armstrong the basic model of consumer decision making process comprises uh, three components uh, the three components are uh, the uh, first is the marketing and other stimuli the second is the buyer's black box and the third is the buyer's responses when we talk about the marketing and other stimuli uh, we are basically speaking about the four p's and uh, we are speaking about uh, the other stimuli in the environment in terms of political economic cultural and technological forces that influence consumer decision making uh when we speak about uh, the second component uh, which is the buyer's black box uh, we are going to speak about uh, the characteristics of the buyer which influence uh, his uh, decision making process uh, which influence the five different stages in uh, the decision making process these are basically related to the consumer and when we talk about the buyer responses uh, this is the buyer's decision this is his response in terms of uh the product the brand and the dealer choice as well as the purchase timing and the purchase amount so uh, uh you know kotler and armstrong had defined this entire process uh, through three constituents or through three components so let us first start uh, with the first component which is marketing and the other stimuli uh, a consumer is confronted uh, with uh, stimuli in the environment uh these stimuli could be of two different kinds one is uh, related to the marketer and uh, it is presented by the marketer through his four p's or through his marketing mix in terms of product price place or promotion when we talk about the product we are talking about product attributes benefits features uh, brand appearance packaging etc when we talk about the price we are talking about the cost the value the prestige associated with the price or the um, you know esteem and uh, when we talk about place we are talking about location convenience outlet accessibility kind of the store uh, is it a large store or a small store the store image the store ambience uh, and the layout and when we talk about promotion we are essentially speaking of the four of the five tools of the promotion mix uh, which is advertising sales promotion personal selling direct marketing and publicity and public relations now this is one set of stimuli which is offered by the marketer there is another kind of stimuli which is presented by the environment in the form of economic political technological and cultural forces that have an impact upon uh, the consumer's decision making process and his black box 
Now, uh, the stimuli that is uh, presented to the market, uh, to the consumer, either by the marketer in the form of his poor fees or by the environment is then dealt with by the buyer's black box. Uh, the buyer's black box has two constituents, the buyer's characteristics and the buyer's uh, decision making process. So when we talk about uh, the buyer's characteristics, these are in terms of cultural, social, uh, psychological and personal factors and when we talk about the decision making process, it is the five stage process uh, which we have spoken of in the earlier sessions, a problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision and post purchase outcome and reactions. Now let us see how uh, the buyer's characteristics have an impact on consumer decision making. We will start with the personal uh, you know factors which or the personal uh, you know characteristics which affect consumer decision making. Uh, when we talk about age and uh, let us start with age and a life cycle stage. Uh, the age of a person has an impact upon his needs, his wants, his preferences. We have something called the age effect and the cohort effect. Uh, age effect and cohort effect have been dealt with in the previous sessions also, where age effect is uh, the, if the, the changes in the brought about of in the physical structure or physical body of a person because of advancement in age. On the other hand, cohort effect is the effect uh, which manifests itself in a uh, particular uh, in, in a particular group of people who were born in a particular era or a particular age and who share who have shared similar experiences. Uh, so the kind of impact you see on them uh, will be called as the cohort effect. We have spoken of these two effects in the previous sessions. Uh, both these effects have an impact upon the manner in which a consumer uh, you know, uh, you know, his need, he identifies his needs and wants or prioritizes uh, his preferences uh, and um, similarly we have the family life cycle in the form of uh, you know, the various stages through which a uh, family passes through or, or a household passes through uh, right from when a person is single uh, with no spouse and no offsprings to a stage when uh, the spouse comes in, the children are born and the, the house is a full nest <coughs> to the point where the house begins to get empty nest when the children leave away home to a stage when uh, one is solitary either the wife or the husband stay in the world and the other is no more. So all of these various st stages in the family life cycle which we call as single newly married, full nest 1, full nest 2, uh, full nest 3, empty nest 1, empty nest 2, uh, a solitary survivor, all of these various stages have an impact on uh, the decision making process. They will have an impact upon how needs and wants are uh, prioritized, how uh, consumers basically prioritize their preferences. Uh, it will have an impact on the in income and um, savings pattern uh, across these stages. There will be a change in the income, there will be a change in the savings pattern, there will be a change in the kinds of needs and wants the people have across these different stages of the family life cycle. So uh, the very uh, first stage in the decision making gets impacted uh, by age, for example, the manner in which a need is going to get recognized or the manner in which uh, you know uh, alternatives would be evaluated. All of these will have an impact, uh, will be impacted upon by age and by family life cycle. The second characteristic which affects uh, decision making is occupation. Occupation here affects consumption patterns and so is the economic situation. Both of them put together are going to have an impact upon a buyer's decision making process, the manner in which he is going to approach the marketplace. Is he going to be approaching the marketplace economically and rationally? Or, or emotionally, is he is his uh, are his preferences uh, going to be uh, you know uh, finally um, you know uh, met by uh, economic orientation or uh, a rational orientation or uh, emotional orientation? So uh, the the income, the occupation, the savings, etc., is going to have an impact upon the manner in which he is going to approach the marketplace. Similarly, lifestyle. Uh, when we talk of lifestyles, we basically speak about the pattern of living and this could be explained in terms of the AIOs or the activities, interests and opinions. We have spoken about AIOs in our session on segmentation as well. 
uh, a, p a person's activities, interests and opinion is also going to have an impact on his decision making process. Personality and self concept is another char personal characteristic that has an impact on consumption patterns and decision making. Products and brands also have a personality and consumers also have a personality. So, consumers are basically likely to choose such brands uh, uh, you know whose personalities match their own self. So, these are certain personal characteristics which have a bearing upon consumer decision making. And now we come to uh, the psychological uh, characteristics which also have an impact upon consumer decision making. Motivation, uh, we speak about the need, the want, the motivation you know. So, uh, the first thing which starts the decision making process is a need. Okay, so, we are motivated or we are driven towards a satisfaction of that need, we are moved towards, a, we put in efforts basically, we are driven to, we are urged to move towards a particular goal, so as to be able to satisfy a need or a want. Um, motivation here uh, could relate to an urge to act, to fulfill a goal or satisfy a need through the purchase of a product or a service offering. Perception, perception is the ability to perceive the environment, sense the environment, um, you know it, it perception has an impact on the manner in which a good or service is viewed or perceived or a brand is perceived or any of the four P's whether it is product, price, place or promotion is, is viewed or is perceived. Uh, perception basically uh, will you know impact the decision making process because it is through uh, the manner in which a person perceives that he is basically be able to, that he is going to be able to basically decide on a product choice or a brand choice. So, uh, the, the manner in which he is going to evaluate his alternatives and the manner in which he is going to finally take a decision with respect to the purchase of a product or service offering and or brand is going to be determined by his perception. So, perception has an important role to play uh, in consumer decision making. Uh, perception could relate to the product or service, it could relate to the price, it could relate to the uh, place uh, where it is sold, it could relate to the manner in which it is promoted uh, and so forth. So, perception has a big role to play in, uh, the, in, ma in, in, in the final uh, decision choice with respect to a product or service offering. Learning, learning also has a role to play, uh, people learn uh, either uh, with through their own experiences or through others experiences, uh, they, they gather information, uh, they also store uh, you know uh, information uh, in their memory, uh, they also uh, you know the, the experiences that they have are also get stored in their memory and so learning basically relates to one's memory. Uh, learning could be either as we as I said could be experiential based on direct experience or it could be conceptual based on indirect exp experience or reading or information gathering and processing. Uh, it could be based on marketing communication uh, that means information that is provided by the marketer or it could be through personal word of mouth or it could be experiential. A person's learning will also have an impact in the manner in which he was going to uh, first identify the alternatives, whether the alternatives form a part of his uh, awareness set or his consideration set and uh, the manner in which he will decide on the inert and inept set will all be basically based on his own learning and attitude. So, learning is going to be important in terms of identification of alternatives, while evaluation of alternatives also much of a person's uh, decision comes from um, you know his learning, his past learning and his current learning, his experiences, others experiences, his own information gathering, processing, storage and retention. So, uh, in terms of evaluation on, of alternatives also um, learning will have a big role to play. Uh, finally, with respect to taking a purchase decision choice, again learning will have a major role to play. A person's beliefs also have a role to play, a beliefs are subjective thoughts and perceptions about how people feel towards certain things or how they feel towards you know a person or an object, a product or a brand. Uh, it also depicts a person's attitude whether it is favorable or unfavorable, or it is positive or negative. So, beliefs or, sub or subjective perceptions or subjective thoughts are also going to have an impact upon the manner in which uh, consumers 
basically make a decision with respect to buying product X and not product Y. Um, the third factor which affects decision making is culture. When we talk about culture, uh, we speak about uh, the culture and subculture as well as the social class. Culture uh, is the sum total of values, knowledge, beliefs, myths, language, customs, traditions, rituals that have evolved from the society. So, uh, it, it, it has a huge impact on a consumer decision making, likes, dislikes, preferences, uh, feeling of favorableness, unfavorableness or uh, any of these predispositions uh, come uh, you know have a have act are actually impacted a lot by culture in fact culture has the deepest and the most profound influence uh, they influence the manner in which we dress up the the kind of food we eat uh, our day to day living patterns the kind of festivals we celebrate uh, ceremonies uh, we uh, you know we have so um, culture has a big role to play within culture uh, we have the subculture and the influence uh, impact, influence of culture and subculture is so profound that it it basically gets handed over from one generation to another so uh, the the cultural influences are handed over try intergenerationally and uh, one generation learns and acquires it from the previous generation so it has a big influence on a consumer and in the manner in which he is going to behave in the marketplace uh, some cultures are also, uh, you know, uh, very. Um, can some cultures can also be, you know, we can relate it with the manner in which people approach the marketplace. Some cultures, people are very emotional. They're driven towards, uh, you know, the trapper choices are mainly because of fun, fantasy, head, you know, hedonic pleasure, subjective elements, emotion, moods. Other cultures, they're very economic. So, um, and they are driven on to, to with respect to rationality or price or cost versus benefit. So, uh, the manner in which a person will approach the marketplace or the perspective or the orientation with which he will behave in a marketplace is also affected by culture. Social class is another uh, determinant in uh, the so cultural characteristics. Uh, these basically refer to relatively uh, permanent divisions and stratifications in a society which divides the society into the upper class, middle class and the lower class. People belonging to a particular class are supposed to uh, behave in a similar manner, uh, more so because they uh, are similar with respect to income, education, occupation, wealth and other similar variables. So, members in a particular class are supposed to share values, beliefs, lifestyles, behaviors. Uh, they're going to sh they seem to be sharing all this and that is what differentiates one one social class from another. Uh, it is noteworthy here to state that uh, you know there is social mobility today and which is on the rise Me people are moving up the social ladder and one social class acts as a frame of reference for the other. In other words the, Im the immediate upper class acts as a frame of reference for the class which is lower. So, uh, gradually over a period of years with increase in income, with increase in uh, you know education and occupation patterns and uh, the corresponding increase in income, people move up the social class. Social mobility is today on the rise. Let us now come to the social influences. We also speak about uh, the social characteristics which have a bearing on consumer decision making. Uh, the first uh, uh, you know, characteristic which we uh, talk of is family. Family is, has the most important uh, influence on consumer decision making. There occurs uh, within a family something what we uh, know as socialization. Uh, there are two kinds of families. Uh, the family of uh, orientation and the family of procreation. The family of orientation comprises a person, a child, uh, you know, a per person is born into his family of orientation, which comprises his parents and his siblings. And then there is the family of procreation, which basically comprises his spouse and his children. Um, you, you know, while uh, families are of two kinds, uh, we, we see in terms of socialization also which is of two kinds. We have a child socialization, we also have something called adult socialization. Major decision making uh, in families today is joint decision making. Earlier decision making was either male dominated or female dominated, but today we see purchase decisions are getting uh, something which are jointly done. 
the various roles buying roles are played by different members of the family we have discussed the buying roles earlier in the form of initiator influencer decider buyer and user these roles are played by uh, different people in the different in the in the family and across different purchase situations these roles are played played variedly a study of the family life cycle is also important because it is illustrative of the various stages through which a family passes and uh, people's uh, consumption priorities change uh, they buy different kinds of goods and services across these different stages of the family life cycle so the family as a whole uh, is an important social um, force which acts an important which acts uh, which is uh, which is uh, which has an important influence on consumer decision making uh, the second impact uh, in the social influence comes from uh, friends peers uh, and colleagues purchase decisions are often made uh, with because of peer influence people are driven towards making uh, decisions uh, where where a major influence has come from their uh, friends or neighbors or um, work peers uh, the third uh, you know uh, element in the social in the, sorry third element in the social uh, characteristics comes from groups um, when we talk of groups we will speak a little bit about uh, reference groups reference groups basically are refer to people to whom an individual looks as a basis for uh, personal stand for personal standards they could be both formal and informal and they have an impact on consumer decision making they have an impact on buying behavior uh, reference groups could be direct groups uh, where people are a member of uh, they could that they are called membership groups they could also be uh, indirect where people do not have any physical contact with each other but still look up to the other uh, to emulate his style to emulate his behavior these are called aspirational groups so uh, reference groups are of two kinds one uh, where a person has physical contact with the other uh, meets them often face to face the uh, third element in uh, the you know social uh, influences is groups uh, when we talk about groups let us discuss something about reference groups now reference groups are people to whom an individual looks as a basis for personal standards they could be either formal or informal groups which have an impact upon buying behavior uh, reference groups could be of two kinds a direct reference groups or indirect reference groups direct reference groups are where people come into contact with each other meet each other often and are influenced by each other we call them as membership groups there are other groups uh, which are called which are indirect reference groups which are also called aspirational groups where people are do not meet each other or people are not in contact with each other but nevertheless uh, they are influenced by others in their reference groups they want to be like them they aspire like being them so basically reference groups um are groups of people or are people where uh, you know uh, an individual looks as a basis of for personal standards he looks up to them to basically emulate their uh, lifestyle their behavior and their uh, living patterns um now um reference groups act as information sources they influence consumer perceptions they affect an as consumers aspirational levels and basically they could stimulate or constrain a person's behavior Uh, another influence comes to us from opinion leaders opinion leaders are people who are looked up in great esteem by others around them in because they have some level of skill some level of expertise uh, some level of uh, you know information and knowledge about a product or service category they have a certain kind of a status or they have a certain kind of a personality because of which people look up to them uh, for advice for information and for uh, you know general uh, you know opinion as and when they want to purchase goods and services uh, roles and statuses also in in society also have an imp impact on consumer decision making roles refer to certain activities and status is the esteem given to a particular role by a society so all of these are characteristics which impact consumer decision making and uh, research and studies into these factors which are a uh, social personal psychological uh, you know and cultural can provide a marketer with knowledge which can help him serve the consumers more effectively now uh, the, these were with reference to the buyer characteristics 
or in the buyer block by the buyer's black box. Now, let us come to the five stage decision making process. So, uh, the, the, these characteristics, the buyer characteristics basically have an impact on uh, the buying decision process which comprises the five stages which we have spoken of earlier, problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision and post purchase behavior. So, um, uh, problem recognition is where a person recognizes there is a need or a problem, uh, you know there is a need to be satisfied, a problem to be solved and as we have discussed earlier, a uh, problem could be either an actual state type or it could be a desired state type. Actual state when the product is failing or the consumer is running short of it and he needs a replacement and a desired state is where another product or brand seems superior to the one that is currently being used and so the consumer wants to buy it. A need could be triggered off both by an internal stimuli and an external stimuli and marketers basically need to identify such stimuli. Uh, which can trigger off the need uh, process or which can immediately trigger off a need. Um, the next stage is consumer uh, information search by the consumer. The consumer goes for an information search so as to be able to uh, make the right kind of a decision. He gathers information about the product category, about the various brands, about the various alternatives. Uh, this search could be ongoing, specific and incidental. Uh, he could either uh, you know, recall information which is in his memory. Uh, you know, it, either uh, which was gathered and stored earlier or his experiences which have been direct and indirect, all of which have been stored in his memory and these comprise what we call the internal sources. Uh, there could also be uh, cases where the consumer looks outside or look externally for more information and he seeks information from the external environment. We call this an external search for information. A source of information could be personal uh, in terms of family, friends, peers, colleagues, they could be commercial from the marketer or uh, in the form of advertising or sales pro pro promotion or personal selling or s by salesperson or by publicity. It could be as a, through a public source like mass media or consumer organizations and consumer forums or government rating agencies or it could be experiential in the form of self, self and others experiences. Uh, personal contacts are very highly influential sources but the maximum uh, credibility basically comes from public sources. Uh, then uh, the after the consumer has basically uh, gathered information he compares the different alternatives uh, on, the uh, on the various features that he that he would consider in choosing amongst alternatives. These features could be either functional or utilitarian in the form of features, attributes, benefits. They could be also in terms of a subjective, emotional or hedonic, uh, you know, uh, like fun, fantasy, pleasure, displeasure or uh, emotions, prestige associated with the product, etc. So, the manner in which he was going to evaluate may be driven towards functional attributes uh, or towards subjective elements. He would use these to evaluate the various brands and finally come up to a purchase decision. At the end of the evaluation process, a purchase intention is formed. After the uh, consumer is, uh, has, uh, has uh, you know, evaluated the alternatives and a purchase intention is formed, he selects a particular brand to buy and the, this could be in the form of a trial or a first purchase or, a, or uh, gradually result into repeat purchases. Uh, the consumer has to take decisions with respect with where to buy from, how much to buy, whom to buy from, when to buy and how to pay. Um, the purchase decision or purchase intention that is the desire to buy the most preferred brand however may not result in a purchase decision in the favor of a brand. It could be subjected by uh, you know impact of others or by situational characteristics. Um, for example, he may be influenced by the salesperson at the store or by a fellow consumer at the store or uh, the particular brand which he wants may not be available at that point of time and he settles for another one. So, the purchase intention may not always result in a purchase decision. Thereafter, uh, there is something what we call as the post purchase behavior. The consumer uses the product and evaluate. The consumer uses the product and evaluates the chosen alternative in the light of 
its performance vis-a-vis -vis the expectations he had with respect to the product or service offering and or brand. He could experience feelings uh, of three kinds. Either he could, it could be a neutral feeling where performance uh, meets expectations. Uh, it's a neutral feeling or it could be in terms of performance exceeds expectations which is pleasurable state or satisfaction or it could be in the form of where performance matches much below expectations which leads to feelings of displeasure uh, and dissatisfaction. This particular phase of purchase outcome and reaction is very important because this is going to have uh, bear an impact on consumer learning. It is going to have an impact as a part of an experience which is going to be stored in the consumer's memory for later use. Uh, also it is going to affect future purchase decisions. So this particular stage is a very important one. Finally uh, we have the buyer's response. Uh, while in the buyer black box, the buyer also takes a decision with respect to the product choice, the brand choice, the dealer choice, the timing of the purchase and the amount of the purchase. So here uh, we have uh, the model which we just showed uh, where we started with a stimuli. Uh, which was presented by the marketer in the form of the four P's and then there were the other stimuli from the environment and then finally uh, we had the buyer's characteristics in the form of social, cultural, personal and psychological characteristics which had an impact on his decision making process and uh, his decision making process uh, would relate to the product choice, the brand choice, the dealer choice, the timing of purchase and the quantity of purchase. This um, is uh, what the model of uh, bu you know, buying is concerned with respect to a B2C scenario. We call it the model of consumer buying. Now let us move to the model of industrial buying. Okay. Now uh, the industrial market or a business market is defined as a market that buys uh, transforms processes and sells further either for further transformation and processing or for consumer use. So it basically consists of organizations that buy and buy goods and services for further use in the production and supply of other goods and services that are sold to others. So we call it a business to business scenario, we also call it a B2B market. The product or service offering is bought by one business organization and further processed, transformed or assembled uh, you know, for further sale uh, to another uh, business consumer or to a personal consumer. So now the business markets are very different from consumer markets. Let us speak about uh, the characteristics of uh, business markets which differentiate them from uh, consumer markets. One, they are huge in terms of size and investment. So business markets are uh, huge, they are big in nature, they have a huge turnover, uh, they, they are smaller in terms of number of players but they are large in terms of uh, purchase and consumption. That means they contain very few buyers but very large and bulky buyers. The bulk buyers are not going to buy in terms of one or two, they are going to buy in terms of hundreds and thousands. These um, players, these buyers are geographically concentrated, they, they, uh, the main uh, you know, f factory or the main setup uh, is set in a particular, uh, outside a particular city and large number of ancillary units uh, spring up in and around. So they supply uh, to each other, they buy from each other. So these uh, buyers are uh, concentrated to each other. Uh, the, 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 the market is a, in terms of a derived demand. That means if the um, you know demand for a fan increases, the demand for bearings and motors uh, to basically be used in the manufacture and assembly of these fans is also going to increase. So it's a derived demand uh, which is highly inelastic. Even if prices in the market increase, there is not going to be an impact on the demand uh, of such raw material or of such components and supplies. Demands also fluctuates very rapidly. This is again something which is very uh, dissimilar to uh, a consumer market where demands are, demand is generally stable but in case of industrial markets demand is uh, very rapid, it's very, it's, if it's, it's fluctuates very rapidly. 
the buying situation that uh, in you know industrial buyer faces uh, would could range between three kinds of uh, scenarios a straight rebuy a modified rebuy and a new task we shall be talking about this a little later but uh, these basically these the, the buying situations or the buying scenarios are classified into these three categories based on number 1 the complexity of the problem being solved the newness of the product requirement the perceived risk the number of people involved in the buying process and the time available in hand so based upon the complexity of the problem the newness of the product requirement the risk involved the number of people involved in the buying process and the time available in hand or the urgency with which a particular uh, problem is to be solved or purchase is to be made will determine whether uh, the buying scenario will be a will will be a new task or a modified rebuy or a straight rebuy uh, when we talk about uh, the modified rebuy the straight rebuy and the new task uh, we will uh, we can say that uh, when it comes to a state of a uh, new task the product or service offering is being bought for the first time and um, not much of experience uh, you know has been is there with respect to such a purchase so the process is very very complex and time consuming when the product or service has been brought earlier but they need to be made some modifications with respect to either the product specification or the uh, purchase amount or the price terms or the delivery terms we call it a modified rebuy which means that um, while the process is not going to be uh, quick and simple it's not going to be very long drawn either it's going to be moderate amount of uh, effort in terms of both physical effort and cognitive effort but when we talk about a uh, straight rebuy it is in terms of a direct repeat purchase so uh, we'll see the compl maximum complexity comes with respect to a new task and uh, max simplicity and quickness comes with respect to the straight rebuy or the repeat purchase uh also uh, while we are speaking about the differences between consumer markets and business markets uh, we also have to say here that uh, the decision making process is also very different from in a b2b scenario from a b2b b2c scenario the decision making is in a b2b is done in a very professional manner it is very complex it is done by a committee or a group of people who are referred to as the buying center uh, the process is formal it is very complex it is very professional and it is long drawn it is formalized it is bureaucratic and very very complex and uh, the buyers and sellers work closely uh, with a long term uh, you know seeking long term alliances seeking long term partnerships so the process as a whole is something which is very very complex and very different with respect to uh, b2c scenario uh, let us see the model here uh, just as we have the model uh, for uh, the b2c uh, scenario we have a model for the b2b scenario also so we have the model of business buyer behavior uh, where uh, kotler and armstrong have proposed such a model uh, where the environment comprises the marketing stimuli and other stimuli the marketing stimuli is the same a uh, stimuli which we saw in the b2c scenario also the four p's the product price place promotion uh, the other stimuli are also similar to the b2c but there are some differences like we have them in the form of economic technological political cultural and competitive forces now this the the stimuli is going to have an impact on the buying decision process which is uh, dominated uh, or uh, you know by the buying center the buying center comprises people with different backgrounds from different departments uh, they come with different orientations and perspectives so we have uh, organizational influences interpersonal influences and individual imp uh, influences which have an impact on the uh, decision process that takes place by the buying center and finally we have the buyer responses in the form of the product or service choice the supplier choice the order quantity the delivery terms and times the service terms and the payment so if you see we again have three constituents here the environment the buying organization and the buyer responses um so 
here according to Cutler and Armstrong, uh, we have the three constituents in the form of the environment which acts as an influence, the buying organization which is related to the buying center and the decision process and the various influences and the buyer response. So, we will now speak about uh, the working dynamics uh, amongst these three components. So, the environment here uh, it comprises the marketing stimuli in the form of the marketing mix of the four P's and there are other stimuli uh, in terms of political, technological, economic, cultural and competitive environment. The environment basically provides uh, strengths and weaknesses, also helps identify opportunities and threats. So, it provides the, envi the environment acts as a stimuli to act, it provides strengths and opportunities and helps identify weaknesses and threats. Then we have the buying organization which basically comprises uh, the buying center. Uh, the buying center is the decision making unit of any organization. It is a formally defined unit comprises people from different departments, from different functional uh, areas. They are members of the, the unit, they vary in personal background, in interests, in preferences as also their buying motives, their habits, their orientations. And we will see that the membership, power balance and dynamics vary for different products and for different buying situations. Uh, as I just spoke about uh, the three buying scenarios, if we see in the case of a new task uh, when the product or service is being purchased for the first time, uh, the R&D personnel and the engineering people have a big role to play. On the other hand, in the case of a straight rebuy uh, where it is a routine purchase or it is a repeat order or in the case of a modified rebuy where product specifications or price terms or delivery terms are slightly modified, in that case it is the purchase department that acts very powerful. So, the power, the power balance, the dynamics and the overall dominance uh, in with respect to decision making will vary across buying situations and will be spread across people from different functional areas, people from different departments. Here we have the major influences on industrial buying behavior. Uh, the various influences uh, could be in terms of uh, you know the uh, environmental, organizational, interpersonal and individual uh, influences. Uh, economic influences uh, refer to various stages in the business cycle, uh, inflation, depression, recession, etc. And their resultant impact on the flow, money flows in the economy uh, the and the level of demand, mm, government orientation towards economy and monetary policies, that means interest rates, etc. So, you have the environmental uh, influence being impacted by the majorly impacted by the economic environment uh, where we speak uh, where the various different stages in the business life cycle, the money flows in the economy, the level of demand and government economic and monetary policies uh, will, have an imp uh, uh, will have an impact upon uh, business buying. We also have technology, technology as an important force. Uh, technology basically, uh, you know, the rate of technology change, technology transfer, technology adoption, um, the kind of technology adopted, also the technology vis a vis environmental concerns, all of these have an impact upon the decision process by a business uh, marketer. Uh, competition here refers to amount of competition, a number of competitors, the nature of competition, and the dynamics in competition and uh, the political uh, forces here also have an impact, important role uh, you know to play in the environment in terms of political stability instability the government philosophy and orientation towards investment towards growth towards development and the natural environment in terms of availability of resources impact of industry on the environment environmental depletion environmental pollution waste and disposal management all of these have a bearing on uh, industrial buying behavior. So, we have a uh, demand, level of demand, economic outlook, interest rate, rate of technological change, political and regulatory developments, competitive developments and social responsibility concerns uh, as environmental forces which have an impact upon business buying situations. The second kind of forces which have an impact on uh, industrial buying behavior are organizational forces. Organizational forces include one, the philosophy and orientation of the founder fathers, of the directors, of the various executives and the top management, the company vision, mission and strategy, objectives of the company, 
policies and procedures for purchase? Uh, is it centralized or is it decentralized? Uh, is it uh, orientation uh, in, in, ter in terms of quality or is it a price orientation? Is it a short term or is it long term focus and contract? Uh, purchase through intranet, extranet, supply chain management, partnership management. So all of these, um, ha, you know, are uh, important policies or an important procedures for purchase, which have an impact on business buying. Uh, structure and systems for purchase in terms of buying center, the constituents of the buying center, the power balance, and the dynamics also are important forces on industrial buying behavior. Then we have the interpersonal and individual characteristics. A person, the buying center comprises people from different backgrounds. Uh, each, every constituent is an individual in himself. He is different in terms of demographic and psychographic backgrounds, in terms of age, income, personality, risk, attitude, etc. Uh, the buying center is very diverse in terms of varying interests and orientations towards buying, as well as interest, authority, status, empathy, persuasiveness. So all of this have an impact upon the ultimate impact on a buying process or the buying decision making. Okay, so um, now the decision making process in terms of B2B is very complex, is much more elaborate, very professional, very formal uh, than consumer buying or than B2C buying. Robinson and Associate have identified a uh, eight stage eight step process they, they, they have identified eight stages and they've called each stage a by phase so let us discuss each of these stages as eight by phases in the buying process or in the buying decision process we start with the problem recognition okay so the process basically begins when somebody in the organization identifies a need it could be a department it could be a person he identifies that either uh, stocks are getting depleted or um, so, so, you know some machinery is not working or there is a damage of a product or a, you know you know constantly some some facility and it needs a replacement or it could be also in terms of a desired state where uh, the department uh, realizes that something better could be purchased and used. So it could either be in the form of an actual state or a desired state and the need could be triggered off again uh, by an internal stimulus or by an external stimulus. The second stage is in terms of general need description. The product or service uh, which is required is laid out in very broad terms. So what is required is stated, the product or service requirement very broadly, very general terms it is laid out. The third stage is, third stage is product specification where uh, the person or the department concerned specifies the product characteristics and the product requirements. So what is it that is required is clearly specified and how much of it is required is also status. This stated, this is called product specification. The next stage is supplier search. Business organizations uh, look, uh, you know, for, look for themselves a list of vendors. Um, generally speaking, all, uh, uh, you know, companies have a list of approved vendors, but they sometimes also search the environment for new vendors or for uh, newer suppliers which may have entered the scene with better product and service offerings. Uh, the list is drawn up from trade directories or yellow pages or websites or trade shows. Um, in case of a straight rebuy or for modified rebuy, the, the buyer can refer to a database, but in case of a new task, he may have to search for newer suppliers and newer vendors. Then uh, the next buy phase is proposal solicitation. Uh, the buyer invites the various vendors and suppliers to uh, submit their tree, submit their proposals. Uh, invitations could be placed in the form of advertisements in newspapers, trade journals, or company websites. And member vendors are basically asked to submit a detailed reports uh, about their product. Uh, their features, their attributes, the product specifications, the price of the product, the discounts uh, that they could provide, the warranty guarantee schemes, the exchange schemes, the terms of delivery, the mode of payment, etc. So all of these is basically specified in the, through proposals. People are asked to, the vendors and suppliers are asked to submit proposals specifying and giving information with respect to each of these. Thereafter, uh, the uh, purchase committee or the buying center decides on the supplier whom selection. The buyer goes in for an evaluation of suppliers. 
the buying center would uh, establish or identify their evaluative criteria that is criteria on which they would be evaluating the product or the, the various suppliers. And uh, this evaluation uh, unlike B 2 C is majorly influenced uh, through functional attributes or through features, attributes and benefits and also very uh, strongly influenced by the price criteria. Today however, things are moving beyond the price orientation and companies also look at the quality, they also look at supplier reputation, supplier credibility and other characteristics. Uh, but nevertheless, in case of government organizations, the prime consideration is price. Okay. Buying decision needs to take, uh, buying center needs to take decisions on how many suppliers to use, whether quality is a prime indicator or price is a major determinant or uh, the total evaluation of the supplier including his reputation is more important. So finally, the buying center would decide on a supplier. Thereafter, uh, the routine order is made, uh, the, you know, the, the formal requisition is made in terms of listing the technical specification, the quantity required, the delivery terms, the negotiated price, the payment, the damages, the return policies, each and everything with respect to the agreement is clearly laid out. The technical specification, the quantity required, the mode of payment, whether payment is made in full or is going to be in parts, the negotiated price, these uh, warranty guarantee schemes, the return policies etc. All of it is clearly laid out in an agreement and it is called the order routine specification. Finally, uh, the order is procured, uh, the, the um, material is used and um, you know the, the, the uh, buyer experiences satisfaction or dissatisfaction with respect to the product that he has bought. Uh, this leads to something called a review or a periodic evaluation uh, where the buyer reviews the performance of the product or service uh, and the chosen supplier on a regular basis. Uh, this particular evaluation will help him later in terms of straight rebuy and modified rebuy where if, 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 he, if, he, if he finds his purchase outcome to be satisfactory, he would just go ahead straight and repeat order with respect to that supplier in cases of a uh, straight rebuy or a modified rebuy. In case he is debt satisfied, he may have to change his supplier and he may have to also terminate his contract, existing contract with the current supplier. So, these are the eight stages or eight by phases as proposed by Robinson and Associates. Thereafter, we have the buyer response uh, where we see takes decisions with respect to the product or service, supplier choice, order quantity, order delivery. Uh, terms and sub times and uh, service terms and payments. This brings us to uh, a, the, the a, you know the conclusion to this particular session where we spoke about the basic models of consumer decision making. Uh, in the next session we will be speaking about the specific models and we will talk about uh, the various researchers who have come up with their various models which try to explain underlying dynamics that go into consumer decision making. Before we conclude, let us look at the references. Uh, we have Kotler, a marketing management Prentice Hall, Kotler and Armstrong, ma principles of marketing Prentice Hall, uh, Kotler and Keller, marketing management Pearson, Loudon and Della Bitta, consumer behavior Tata McGraw-Hill, Peter and Olson, consumer behavior and marketing strategy McGraw-Hill, Schiffman and Kanu, consumer behavior Prentice Hall and Wells and Prensky, consumer behavior John Wiley. Now, what are frequently asked questions? Question 1, what are the various factors that affect consumer buying? So, you will speak about the uh, environmental factors and the personal factors, buyer characteristics uh, in terms of environmental factors, in terms of political, economic, technological and cultural factors and uh, buyer characteristics in terms of personal, social, cultural and psychological factor, ca characteristics that affect consumer buying. Second is what are the various stages of the industrial buying process? We have just mentioned the eight by phases where problem rec we start with problem recognition and end, end with a supplier evaluation and periodic review. Uh, let us come to self evaluation tests and quizzes. Uh, question number one, uh, the true false, the decision making process in consumer markets is different from the one that takes place in industrial or business markets. True or false? Well, this is a true statement. The process is very different. A reference group could be direct as well as indirect. 
is it a true or a false statement? This is again a true statement. Reference groups could be direct as well as indirect. Fill in the blanks. The dash market is defined as a market that buys, transforms, processes and sells further either for further transformation or processing or for consumer use. The answer is a business market. The three buying situations in industrial marketing are straight rebuy, dash and dash. The straight rebuy, modified rebuy and um, new task. The buyer's black box comprises two components with the dash characteristics and the buying decision process it comprises the two components with the buyer's characteristics and the buying decision process. Come to the short answers, mention the five stages in the consumer decision making process. So you have the problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision and post purchase behavior. And then uh, we have a question, what do you mean by buying organization? The buying organization comprises the buying center which goes through the entire buying process. It is the decision making unit of the buying organization. Formally defined unit comprises people from different departments, different functional areas and these people vary in their educational background, in their background, in their personal interest, in their preferences as also in their motives, in their habits and orientations. Membership dynamics and power balance in the buying center will vary across purchase situations and across uh, product category. So, uh, this is what brings us to a conclusion of uh, the session 2 of module 5. We shall now move to the next session in the next class. Thank you.